So hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today in this video, I'm going to review the Leaf OS for Realme 6785 devices. And the 6785 devices include Realme 6, Realme 6i, G90 variant, Realme 7, Narzo 20 Pro and Narzo 30 4G. So this is a new ROM developed by Summer and this is Android 13 based, F2FS supported, Realme UI 2.0 based ROM. And the installation of this ROM from directly Realme UI 1.0 is shown in my previous video. You can check that out from here. Now talking about the changelog, there was a previous version of that and the changelog is new boot animation which is not working in Realme 6i, may work in Realme 6. and the security patch, the chromium and yes in default apps you get the chromium by default where you have to log in manually but I have installed chrome because I don't use chromium personally and here I would like to mention that we get a stock camera in this ROM which is this camera I think this is photon camera let's open it so the interface is like this there is video mode scan and photo mode you get access of all the sensors like the depth sensor, black and white sensor and this is the wide angle, the macro camera and the primary sensor and for more settings you can click here and change this and the settings if I go to here you can see we have got these settings like like bright, bright screen, save location data, leveler, capture mode and EIS so these are the modes that we get if you want me to show the EIS mode let me show you that this works or not so you can see it works like this not so useful I will turn it off and here we get a resolution of 4k like the other cameras and we also get a resolution of 480p here you can see and 720p so these are really useful options now I will just turn off the EIS so now let's get back to the changelog. Now the next changelog is app lock. Yes, we get app lock in this ROM. In the security, we have the app lock, which works fine. And a new look in a custom ROM I saw is this one, the fingerprint pop-up. It is something different. If you are using custom ROM for a long time, you will notice this looks quite different. And we also get fingerprint and screen lock by default. Now the other changelogs are like fixed brightness slider curve, fixed issue with GPS, fixed weak vibration, yes. This is an important change log that we get in this ROM. The vibration is really fixed in this ROM. Like I am using Realme 6i G90 variant. So that one, uh, that issue is fixed in my device, but I'm not sure that re in Realme 6 it is fixed or not. Some guys were complaining about the vibration that it is not fixed in Realme 6, but I saw that it is fixed on Realme 6i G90 device. Now we have the bugs that we get in most of the ROMs like the BILT in Bo Wi-Fi, it is still here. And you get three versions that it is, that is the advantage, like you get the vanilla, the micro G and the G apps. So the micro G is quite useful. If you use that, you will know. So now let's get to the settings. The settings UI is quite similar to other ROMs. In the network and internet, there is nothing much. In the connected devices, there is no extra options. In apps, all are same. In battery, we get the battery percentage toggle. And sound and vibration, we get the phone ringtone, the notification, etc. And here is also touch sounds and vibration. And the touch vibration is not working, I guess. Now in the display, we get the QA style shape, which is a customizable feature. Like we can choose between rounded rectangle or round for active tiles and round for rectangle for inactive tiles. So that is by default enabled. Let me show you what is that. So when you keep this turned off, it is on a square shape. But when you turn it on, like let me show you with this one. You can see the icon change to circle. So this is how it works, which looks pretty nice. Now you get the night light, the smooth display. Yes, when it is turned on, you will get by default 90 Hertz and you can also turn it off without any issue and the device will change to 60 Hertz. But I personally use the 90 Hertz feature, so I keep it turned on. Now you can toggle the LT to 4G like that and yes you get the network traffic indicator which is a quite useful feature for a custom rom now in security we get the app lock as i said before and the stock settings like fingerprint and screen lock and talking about the speed it's just like other roms and maybe quite fast you can say and the system we get the gestures 
and in system navigation if we go to settings we get the option to hide the gesture pill so that is a good thing and the blank space under the keyboard is not here after turning that option on and we also get the three finger swipe to screenshot and a useful option which is long press for torch which works pretty fine you can see if i hold the power button the torch turns on so these are the options that we get in the settings now let's get to the ui so the ui is looks quite good and the default wallpaper that was set in this rom is the let me show you so the default wallpaper was this one you can see here the wallpaper somehow cannot be downloaded and here is some extra options like the app grid the icon font shape but we get some limited options here like in icon we get only this now in font we get this options in shape we get these options which is not very less but it's not bad now the launcher that is used is the pixel launcher i guess you can see by the logo and from here we get the developer options for the launcher now talking about the recent style the recent style looks like this here we get a screenshot option which works fine and you can directly edit the screenshot from here and you can choose any app for that and we get the clear all button now talking about bugs I did not notice any major bug in this ROM but for a time I noticed a bug which is when you are watching reels or watching YouTube or any other app if you get a call suddenly and you pick up that call so if you get a sudden call then the default speaker will be shifted to the earpiece and you will just like other human beings you will just turn up the volume and you will notice that the speaker is damaged or what but the default speaker is changed to earpiece to fix that just close that app and open again and that bug will be fixed so that is a minor bug now talking about some performance features i tested the cpu throttling without any script so let me show you the screenshot that i captured so this is the default performance without any script i mean without using any performance script so you can see the performance is not very bad but not good the maximum cpu throttled is 83 percent and talking about the scores the scores are not great you can see the maximum score is 143,000 and the minimum was 1,9,000 and the clock speed you can see is very low like it's just throttled a lot but this can be easily fixed by using a performance script if you don't know about performance script just watch these shots you will know about that so this was the performance that i got without using any script and without using any custom kernel the kernel is stock now talking about the safety net and root by default we get the safety net and play store certification but if you do root make sure to hide the magis then you will get the safety net and play store certification so that's not a big issue now without any further delay i will just jump into bgmi gameplay and yes if you want me to play other games you can comment below so without any backwards let's get to bgmi so i have started your favorite game bgmi with the aps meter which is cape mark and I would like to show the modules that I'm using. So let me do that. So currently I'm using the Cape Mark Enabler, the Universal Safety Net Fix, and the 90 FPS module for BGMI. And these are the Hyper modules that I use for audio. Now let's get back to the game. So let's do a Sanok Bootcamp test as requested by a subscriber of my channel. Talking about the current FPS, we are getting around 80 FPS without using any modules or the script. Yes, I am not using any script right now so now let's jump into bootcamp and for fps you can see the fps by yourself actually i did not notice the fps when i jumped so the current fps is around 40 to 50 fps not really good because i'm not using any script
so you can see the current fps not good it's not even touching 50 fps so i would like to just close this match because we are not getting sufficient fps now let's use the performance script and we will jump to bootcamp again here is the high performance script i will just execute that So you can see the high performance mode is activated and yes you need root for that just for a reminder so as we did not use any script the temperature is very normal and now you can see the fps is constant around 90 fps so the current fps is around 89 let's jump into bootcamp So you can see as I said the FPS is now very stable around 90 FPS because we have just used performance script. So you can see the frame rate is very stable it's more than 80 all the time which is a good sign but the temperature is quite high around 40 to 44 degrees so this is it for the gameplay now i will just close this match and still you can see we are getting 70 fps but the lobby fps is set to 30 so we will get 30 so this is it for this video if you found this video helpful Make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss the updates. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.